Welcome to Toffee TV. It is time to pay tribute to Leighton Baines. What a man. What? <laughs> like... Goodbye, Leighton Baines. <laughs> uh, yeah, Leighton Baines has decided to retire in his own in his own special way. Club offered them another year, but he got to the last game of the season and um, bowed out quietly without much fanfare, without any fans in the stadium. Without even three points. Yeah. <laughs> he, 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 went, he carried on as Everton mm. always did. But um, he didn't win his debut and he didn't win on his final game. There you go. What a, what a, special, what a special way to look at the back of his career. Mm. But um, what a player. What an absolute fantastic footballer to represent Everton Football Club. Yeah, an incredible signing from Wigan. Six million quid. And um, he's been brilliant. He's been brilliant and could have moved a couple of times but didn't. And I suppose the the kind of sad thing about it is we never won a trophy in his uh, his career while he was at Everton. But he's been an absolutely outstanding footballer. Yeah, I think certainly from the from the outside looking in, um, people fans from other clubs or or just football commentators or whatever pundits, they will always hold him second to Ashley Cole in in the Premier League as the best left back and that comes down to the fact that he didn't win anything mm. he didn't play for a club he could have he could have gone to Manchester United but he didn't um, obviously Everton he never pushed for a move because you know Everton Everton didn't want to sell him he could have gone to United twice and Bayern Munich don't yeah that. they all but he, made inquiries but he, but he didn't so he's, he's always he's always going to have this record of obviously uh, uh, individual um, stats are incredible they're better mm. than Ashley Cole's by a mile but Ashley Cole's got all the trophies yeah. and that's the difference and you have to sometimes value that as the ambition side of things that's why it's, it's greater when you have players and you can come back and go oh, he did this and did that but it's also sad it's also sad when a player finishes his career and he hasn't got any trophies mm. yes they have all the they have all, you know they have this incredible bond with the fans and and they do have great numbers, but they don't mean anything to people on the outside of the club. Mm. That's the thing. Now that's for him. He might he might be bothered. He might care one bit. His career. He's fulfilled his career. But it is sad that he couldn't win anything in an Everton shirt. That's the sad thing. Like all those players, like all the players who we all love and you know, we did a video on Patreon. It was like, is Baines a legend? It's like, well. No, because he didn't win anything, but is that his fault? Could have gone somewhere else and won something. Okay, he wouldn't be a legend anywhere else, but does that mean he's not a legend at Everton? It's a very hard... It's very he hard. Is, he is a legend at Everton. Okay. Isn't he? Because we went through... I was thinking it was me and you that did the Patreon video, wasn't it? It was me and Andy, but we went through his numbers. We didn't go through his numbers and what he did and the fact that he could have moved to United and he didn't. It's not, like you say, it's not his fault that that team didn't win anything. He gave 13 years to Everton Football Club and was brilliant in every season, well, most seasons, absolutely brilliant. Played for England 40 times, I think. Um, 30, I think. 30, was it? Absolutely brilliant. I mean, he, was it the World Cup in 2010 he didn't go to because Capello thought he'd get homesick? Or was it the... Yeah. I'm sure it no, was it that. Because he was. went in 2014 to Brazil. But remember, he'd made a comment... And then all of a sudden he was out the squad and he was like, and it was a travesty of justice because at that time he was incredible and England Stephen ended up playing Warnock. People like that. Say, say that name to yourself. No, no, Stephen no, no. Warnock. It's embarrassing. So he was, he was just a fabulous footballer. He is an Everton legend. Whether We said it again. It's like, I think I just said on the, the Peyton thing, Wolves call Steve Bull a legend. Well, Wolves never won nothing. And other people are legends at their football club. So why wouldn't Leighton Baines be, you know, turning down Manchester well not going to Manchester United when he could so people measure legend by whatever they want and everyone there isn't a, a hard fast no no tick you know tick box measurements of, of what is a legend yeah. but he is as close as you would probably get without actually having the trophies because he was just brilliant 420 odd appearances whatever 420 appearances just brilliant so talented as a footballer though brilliant mm. passer of the ball you know Um yeah Represented himself brilliantly, his family. You know, don't hear anything about him, do you? You know, no. just, just everything's quiet. 
you know, the, has he got five kids or has he got four kids? Three? We don't we don't know. There's I was going to say there's rumours he's got. There's not rumours. He either has or he has. But what I mean is you don't know anything really no, no. about him. No, he's a he's a he's a private. He was a he was a brilliant professional. Done his job. Andy brilliantly. Hunter was a brilliant thing yeah. gone. He, he came into the week. club, and he obviously came from Wigan, and he done. He's fancy. Again, it was one of those buys at the time where he was clearly really, really good for Wigan. A lot of teams looked at him. <laughs> Done well for Remember the free kick against United for them. Done well for the England and twenty ones, and it was like you can get him, and it was, he had, it was like one of those things where you know if we'd missed out on it would have been a travesty. And well, he wanted to come here, but he, he? we got him, and some of the best money anyone's ever paid for a player because, okay, he took his time to get into the club. I think he was when he did time for it. I think he was a quiet, unassuming, you know, young man. Mm. Um, took his time. You know, we had Lescott playing in there. Moyes obviously wanted to get him indoctrinated into the club, and but once it, once it, once he was there, and you started to see the flashes, it's brilliant. And then obviously you add Pienaar into the equation and that partnership, and it it just it just frustrates me so much that we never won anything, and it frustrates me that other people don't understand how good he was week in and week out and the chances he created and the assists he got and the goals he got and it is frustrating but I suppose that's just every club will have those players but he was the best in Europe for you know four or five Brilliant, years in yeah. a row every yeah. year he was brilliant. and and it's um and he grew he grew into a he grew the long as he's at the club he grew it more and more and took on more responsibility and you know, penalties and free kicks and and I, I do you know what the only thing I would say not I don't I don't know if this is a negative because this might be a overriding factor why he's so good. But I think at times I think he was I think he was a little bit too laid back in terms of certainly in Martinez's period I would like to have seen him take more responsibility like things like letting Lukaku take the penalties off him. Like I, I wish he'd Morales have that time. I wish he'd never have done that. I wish he would have stood up and said, "No, I'm the penalty taker." But I think it, it, his nature very just was much was well. If you want the responsibility, you take it. Because mm. um, I think if he takes the pen against West Ham, and we, we end up winning three 0 yeah. You know, if he takes the penalty at Wembley and makes it one one. Um, li- little things like that yeah. where no. But he, that's just wasn't in his nature, and that's mm. that's fine. That's that's what makes him what he was. Mm. He was, um, he, he, you know, I, I I I love him to bits. Love him as a yeah. footballer. Love his whole attitude and uh, to the game. His attitude outside the game. And as you say, that that again though, that thing with the World Cup in two thousand and two thousand and ten was like he. It was a throwaway comment saying, you know, I'm a little bit, yeah, like a little bit home, you know, a little bit. Homesick now and again, or I have, and it was like it was nothing. And then the, the, press, the press jumped, jumped on, on it, on and it. it was like, Can he be trusted? Stephen Warnock, load of garbage, absolute garbage footballer, done nothing ever. England were embarrassing in that World Cup. What made it worse was him and Ashley Cole were like neck and neck for like being the best left back. Mm. His stats were way better than Ashley Cole's, way better in a poorer side. In a poorer side. And yet, when it came to a World Cup, it was like, it wasn't to me, it was like, who should be the start left back as your last go? And yet, he didn't go. And it was just like, do me a favour. That's England all over. Absolute mm. nonsense. But, um, no. And you know what? Played played so many games. It wasn't really till I think, the end of 2012 that he really got a serious injury. I think after he played the semi final at Wembley, I don't think he played again after that. Not for a while. I think he was out for a while and it stretched to the then beginning. He got another one, didn't he? Stretched. Martinez's his first season. It stretched to the beginning. But when he when Martinez came though, you forget how important him and Seamus Coleman was when, when Martinez came. That first season, them two getting forward, you know, becoming what we see in football, and you know, all those modern full fullbacks who are the width. You know, they 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 were they were that. He shaped the way fullbacks are used in the Premier League. He changed the way people thought about him and Coleman. You know, and then obviously it evolved, and you see it nowadays where you've got like Trent Alexander Arnold mm. and Robertson for them. City about Kyle Walker and great left backs going for, or you know, attacking full backs and other teams want it. But it was Baines first and foremost, and then Coleman as well. Um, wonderful footballer. 
Let's just have a look at his numbers. Appearances, 420. Goals scored, 39. Penalties, 25. Crosses in Premier League, 2,331. 2, only two people a bit more. Assists, than 67. And actually, the assists don't really do it justly because it's not assists. It's chances mm. created. And he was always top of the shop. Well, his penalties, he scored 25 out of 28. Penalties, yeah. so 89% accuracy from the penalty spot, when, which is incredible. And um, 67 assists, yeah. Which, I mean, <clears throat> the amount of chances he created, <clears throat> that should have been into triple figures, really, mm. because he was just unbelievable. Yeah. Do you, um, <clears throat> do you think towards his 20s, end of his 20s, sorry, when Martinez obviously came out and said he thought that he could move him into centre midfield. You know, he said he seen similarities with him and Philip Lamb. Mm. Um, do you think that could have extended his career as a first team player in terms of like at the highest level? Don't get me wrong. Listen, listen Luke. Luke Dean's come in for the last couple of years at Everton and took the spot off him, which was right. Mm. But we'd seen like maybe the year before that he was starting to slow down and not mm. beat the play. Do you think that if he'd been moved into centre midfield at 28, 29, got a few opportunities and Everton had brought a left back in then, that he could have just stayed not just stayed at the high, highest level for a little bit longer or do you think the game had moved on in midfield? I don't necessarily think it's moved on because he's such a clever footballer with a great passion range that I think he probably could have played centre mid this season. Mm. He'd have had to sit because he obviously can't get up and down. But then Philip Lamb was like that for them. But I don't, I don't know because he was still performing at the highest level up until about two years ago before mm. Dean coming. He was still, he had, he had, wasn't as good because he couldn't get yeah. up and down as frequently. Still great going forward. We've seen a cameo even this season. Leicester at home, he's brilliant. Manchester United, he come on at Old Trafford after twenty minutes when Dean was injured and was brilliant. Um, you know, end up playing three games in a week, yeah. you know, played against Arsenal as well. So he didn't let anyone down at all. But was there an opportunity to push him inside? Yes. That's particularly around the time that the manager was talking about it, then Martinez. And then obviously James McCarthy got that injury and then we, we struggled. Gareth Barry proved yeah. if you can read the game and you're a good passer of the ball, you can play Gareth Barry's just left West Brom, yeah. 41 years of age or something yeah, yeah. years or whatever. So Leighton Baines maybe could have still been in Everton's midfield. I I think I think that I might know. have reinvigorated them maybe. if he'd moved in. I know I, he played once, didn't he, against um, Newcastle? Newcastle he got beat three two. I it think was he just one game. Though, it was one was game. It? That's what I'm saying. And for the manager to build that up, as in like, and I know he had Gareth Barry, but Gareth Barry was. I just think that there could have been opportunities for for all those positions where, <clears throat> say, Gareth Barry wasn't available, or or the manager thought. He needed the rest and he could have moved him in there and then brought a left back in whether it would have been Luke Garbutt at the time or he would have gone and got someone else. I think that would have really helped the team just change it up a little bit, mm. something different. And I think, actually, I think the fact that he was a good player, he deserved to be a little bit more, get a little bit more out of his game to show mm. like his passing. You know, his passing was fantastic, his range was passing, the shape on the passing was fantastic, mm. the way he'd work it into, spe into space and then keep going and then get it back. He had, he's got so. I just don't think, personally, in the latter years, his talent could be shown enough because mm. left back, because the position's changed so much and because you are up and down, I don't think he still had that in his legs, but oddly, I think he could have done it in midfield if he'd sat and been... Well, particularly the way Everton had played for so long, which was with three midfield players, mm -hmm. then he, he's still fit enough to get up and support around the edge of the box and he's got a great shot on him. And let's be honest, he wouldn't be any slower than any of our other midfielders. Probably now. <laughs> Probably now. <laughs> so, I, I, I feel like that's a little thing that could have happened. The one thing you'd have to say with that, there was, the, was there an appetite for him to do that though? Did he want to? Mm. Did he feel like he could do that? Yeah, yeah. He might not have felt like he could do it. I don't. You don't know. Only do you? You we're, we're just talking about it as fans going. Well, that was mentioned and and it was never really explored. But he was such a good football. It wouldn't have surprised me if he could have easily gone in there and been our best player in the middle of the park. But it showed when Philip Lamb went into centre midfield when he when he went out to the Bayern Munich wing because he was such a good, intelligent footballer, mm. and he ended up finishing his career in that position. Let's be honest, running up and down. Exactly. A pitch all day long at that pitch. Well, 
for 90 minutes at the intensity. That, it's a young man's game. Dude, the side of it as well is, especially when you play a fullback and you are playing that role, how many needless, not needless runs, because they are they're needed, but how many runs do you make where you never get the ball playing mm. fullback? Mm. You make that run all day, all, all day, day yeah. all day. Whereas when you're on centre midfield, I think you you you're going to see a lot more of the ball so therefore your energy is expended a lot more evenly over the game mm. you don't have to make if you're if you're the one who holds or sit, you know you're sit you don't have to make that you're one not charge are you exactly. you're going to charge on 50 yards down the pitch and we, not get a ball because you're leaving a gap we've seen it with Gareth Barry all the time you used mm. to used to just sit in front and then just I'll use the word mosey you used to mosey down the pitch hey, you should have heard that. that's a great use you used to mosey down the pitch when he was needed and he used to see him on the edge of the box, just nick the ball away, very clever, and then get get us going. Go. And yeah. I just think that's what something he could have done. I just think his legs and who's to, listen, he mightn't want it. He's, he's gone on his own terms. Of course. But who's just to say that he wouldn't have got another two years out of his out of his career playing? Whether that means playing in the team or whether that's extending for another two years. Because he felt like he could. We we don't know the answer to you this. We're know, speculating. But I, I, think but I just think I just think, for a foot, from a foot, purely footballing point of view, I'd have loved to have seen them play centre yeah. midfield. I'd have played them in this lockdown period mm -hmm. in midfield because the others have not pulled up any trees, have they? So he's a wonderful footballer. He's a pleasure to watch. I normally love strikers and wide players. They're, they're like the things mm -hmm. that get me off the heat. I'm not defenders. I, I appreciate them, but for him. I absolutely love that. I love Luca Dean as well because I think he's such a talented footballer. Him, one of the best players I've ever seen play for Everton, and I've mm. seen us win leagues and cups and stuff. He's the he's he's the best left back I've I think yeah. Everton have ever had. I know people argue with Ray Wilson. Well, Ray Wilson, we never, never got to see him, and he obviously dad, won the World Cup. My dad says Ray Wilson's incredible, but he does say and the other he is, he is as good. and the other thing about him. If you're a footballer and your initials match the position you play in, it makes it I really. Mean, I, I think to be honest, makes it really easy. I think that's literally been one of the things that has been underrated yeah. and underplayed by everybody. Is that he just played where his initials told him? Makes it really, really easy. Listen, he's a legend. Um, as an Everton footballer, I I love him to bits. Um, when he ran away from us in Switzerland, it wasn't great, but made them get a picture. <laughs> I think that the thing with him is he he'll he's such a lovely fella. He's done loads for Everton in the community. You'll see him around town with his camera having a coffee. He's just down to earth, fella. And like I said, Andy Hunter wrote a brilliant thing about him, and it was, you know, everything's downplayed, everything's understated with him. He, he walked off the pitch at the weekend, stopped, turned around, had a look at it, and jogged down the tunnel. Waved, his, waved to his dad, waved to his dad, it. and that was it, wasn't it? Done and dusted. And I even seen the video. It was a video that Everton put out, didn't he? Did his dad have a Press accreditation or something? No, I think yeah. because I think Liverpool had set oh, the bar, Liverpool. hadn't they? Yeah. Last game of the season. What I would yeah. say is, though, I think Everton had a camera on him and they obviously either knew or were speculating. That, well, I think they knew, didn't they? I think that once he was, he was coming on, I think it was pretty yeah, clear. Yeah. And there was a camera on him and he noticed it when he was warming up and he looked quite... Maybe, I don't know if the word's embarrassed, but he, you know, it was his last game and even then he was a bit like, I don't, I don't really want this. So... Fair play to him because he just he, uh, listen. He'll go away now, and I don't know what he'll do. I think he'll stay out the line like for a couple of years. Whether he gets the bug to come back into football, that's Everton up to him. Won him don't he? Yeah, of course he's because he's a fantastic ambassador. Whether it's whether it's off the pitch or on the pitch, mm. I actually and I, listen. I've got absolutely zero to back this up, but he seems to me like someone who's a thinker. And I wonder whether I don't know whether coaching is the right area for him or or there's a. You're gonna say like a director. Well, I don't know because I don't know how I don't know. But you know when you just listen, we've both watched that Dortmund documentary oh, yeah, yeah, and the yeah. amount of people they have ex-players in these roles at the club that aren't coaching roles mm -hmm. he strikes me as that kind of person but he doesn't need to do it the point about he's got he's a, he's only he's still a very young man mm -hmm. and he can go and do whatever he wants now mm -hmm. and live his life um and have a great life with his pleasure to watch him oh yeah absolutely fantastic so there you go let us know your thoughts share your memories of Leighton Baines, absolutely amazing football the only the only good the thing we can say at least is two things he went out and we still love him. It's not always the way. Mm. And number two, we do actually have someone who's brilliant in his position. Yeah. Which makes it a lot easier to say goodbye to. Mm. So, and we haven't always had that as well. No. So, they're, they're two plus points. So, let mm. us know your thoughts on Leighton Baines. Give us some of your memories. Uh, he's going he's gonna to be missed massively. 
Give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and if you want more great videos, join us over on Patreon. The link is in the description. See you later.